All right, so we're gonna uh, we just gonna kick this thing off. Yeah, y'all, it's your boy DJ Cliff, and um, once again doing doing another episode of Cliff Notes, and you can catch uh, some pretty amazing conversations that I've been blessed to have already in the past. Man, shout out to my man Jo Robo from the uh, the conversation that we had in regards to um, to the Robo brand. Um, conversations with Slim Kid Trey, Mike Crenshaw. I, the, like the list goes on, you know, you can subscribe via iTunes. Um, you can catch up with episodes on SoundCloud um, or whatever your podcast service of choice is. So go check it out, man. Comment on it. Subscribe. Let people know about it. Share the links. Um, and then, of course, we are we are still um, I got to get the I got to get the paperwork finalized on the petition that I'm trying to put together to see if we can get. Um, Sizzle Pie Pizza to be the sponsor for the Cliff Notes podcast because I eat a lot of their pizza. So. That'd be tight. <laughs> That's a good move. No doubt. Nah, but for real though, man, you know, if you if if you um if you want to get behind what we're doing here with the podcast in, in any shape shape or form, um just hit a brother up, man. DJ Cliff at Yahoo.com. Um also remember you can catch live episodes of Welcome to the Neighborhood on X Ray FM every Saturday night from eight to ten PM and hear some of the best music from the northwest and worldwide um also some great conversations there and then you can also catch um wttn guests revisited we just hit uh once again here conversations that originally air on x-ray fm okay enough of the business stuff man um there is uh th- there have been times when i've had folk on the radio show many times that i've had folk on the radio show where I said, man, I really want to continue that conversation. Which, 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 truth be told, is where Cliff Notes came from. Shout out to DJ Zimmy for uh, for for branding Cliff Notes. And this is definitely one of those, man. We you know we wrapped up the show uh, when I had this gentleman on the radio uh, just recently, and I was like, you know, we started another conversation. Like, man, I would really love to have you uh, do the Cliff Notes podcast because your story is it sounds pretty interesting. And uh, he was he was kind enough in his crazy busy schedule <laughs> to do that. So uh, without any further ado, let him know who you are, man. Hey, what's up? It's Neil Von Talley. Yeah, representing Erst, <laughs> Futro family, man. You know, Portland. Dude, thank you so much, B, for doing this. Man, it's my pleasure. What a good day to come off of that launch yesterday. So much fun. So I'm hyped. So much to get into just with that. So last night, um, shout out to Holocene. Yes. What's the Erst? label launch event too real b it was crazy yeah i can't believe it still still uh still decompressing still realizing what it really means great turnout first of all uh yeah we sold out that's crazy man exactly and um and and just as you'd expect with the folk who on the who on the roster uh wonderful performances so i guess let's just start let's start there and i mean there's so much to cover yeah but um Kind of tell the story of of what Erst is and sort of where that where that whole idea came from. Man, I mean, I think uh, Erst has, in a lot of ways, been a long time in the making. Uh, really, probably since I met Ripley Snell when we were in high school. Um, but ultimately, things boil down to uh, I was working with Futro Records, definitely still am, uh, for a lot of years, and they've been putting on a lot of tight events and doing a lot of stuff, and we just. As a town, I think we've dealt with this issue of being underfunded in the arts, just in general, not even talking about hip-hop. Um, but then zooming in on hip-hop, I think, uh, you know, I met Martel Webster a few years ago, and, and I just saw how passionate he was about music, and that was crazy. And then he asked me to do some beats for his album, which was even more crazy. Uh, <laughs> but like, like, just like, like, if you just, if the story ends right there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, so yeah, I, that met, definitely I met could Martin have ended Webster, there. and then he asked me to do some beats for his album, and I'm done. And that still was, a, that would have been a, I mean, that was a fun story yeah, by itself, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, man, but I want to play music for a lot of people. I think I know a lot of people that want to play music for the world, and really believe in, in more than just making money. You know, really believe in the community. Uh, so I've seen that for a lot of years in Portland, even before I made music. And when Martel and I just, you know, got really close while we were working on his album and everything, it just kind of came to me and Ripley as a joke one day <laughs> that, 
you know, you got like Jay Z managing ballers. You got these other rappers that are managing ballers. How funny would it be if we had a baller managing some rappers? And that joke just really, in two or three conversations, precipitated into, "Hey, Martel, uh, look, man, there's a lot of beautiful art in this city, and you have a lot of passion. I think that." Uh, you could really make a difference here. I think we could really make a difference here, you know, for this community. And, man, he was so hyped, and he was so behind it, and he, you know, he just said, okay, well, who's the team? You know, who do we pick out? How do we do this? And since September, we've just been doing that, building the studio, getting ready for the label. Well, one, and one of the things that you that you said is, you know, working with Martel and, and just seeing his passion for it. That was one of the things in the when you guys came on the radio show that was really easy to see was was just that like his his passion for for what he was doing. I mean, because he could have he could have easily just said, you know, I'm Martel Webster. This is something that that I kind of look at as a hobby. It's kind of yeah, right, yeah. Let's let's do this. Let's just let's just throw my name out there. And- yeah, like you'll pay attention to me because I'm already you know. An NBA player or something. Exactly, but, but no, nah, I mean, but he's, I mean, yeah, he's really, that's not where he's really coming passionate from at all. about, yeah, yeah, which is, which is, which is super, super dope. So yeah, he wants people to forget. He doesn't care, you know, about the ball, and he loves ball, and he's yeah. passionate about it. But yeah. when it comes to the music, he doesn't want to be thought of as an NBA player turned rapper at all. And he, he wants I mean, to he be said as an much. artist, you know. You know, during the show last night, he said as much that, you know, I'm not here to talk about basketball you right know, this is up tonight is about music and it's about yeah. connecting with you people which is really really dope um yeah, he really believes in in the 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 bigger picture of what art and music do for culture yeah, and, yeah. and for people yeah. so so um i'm gonna say this right now if anybody who listened to the um to the kenny fresh episode of of uh cliff notes at that point i think it was just called D- dj cliff presents what up kenny um you're gonna. There's something that's very familiar that you'll hear in this episode that I'm doing with, with Mr. Um, with Mr. Neil here. I'm two things. One, you know that I I can't multitask, which is what I'm trying to do right now. <laughs> Got a and then camera two, out. Exactly. And then two, you're going to hear the familiar uh, squeak of the chair. So you know, I think we're gonna make that a very uh, you know sort of a part of the the cliff notes. Just gotta have the squeak. <laughs> Um, so, so, uh, it went from, a, it, it went from sort of just a, a thought or an idea to, um, to a reality that, that culminated last night in a label launch, yeah. um, that was, that was uber successful and you had representatives from the label. So run that down, let everybody know who that is. Well, uh, yeah, last night was so special. We got to, for the first time ever, get all of the, all of the starting five on the label up on stage together to make music together and let Portland know, you know, who we are. Uh, initially where we're coming from so that was myself ripley snell during our set we got to get a bunch of other portland hip-hop on stage we had neo geo from futro we had some cats from renko man we had time travelers up there we had new classics represented it was crazy so then we moved on to blossom set live band super fun had yum yum up there from futro playing bass stilo you know representing service and robo up there playing with us so much fun uh, then Martel and Mike Bogan, man, and I don't even know what to say about those sets. Both crazy. We had Stewart out for Mike Bogan set. So My name is Stewart. You'll never get away from it, Stu. <laughs> I know. I know. He, I know. I had a hard time with that. It was um, the energy, man. You know, just the energy in the room last night was 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 dope. It was palpable. Yeah, know? and um, I've played a hall scene a lot, and I've had a lot of good shows at hall scene, but that was. Yeah, I, to, obviously for me that was special, I guess, anyway, because, you know, it's our label launch. It's going to feel different, right. but I am I hope that that feeling was shared, you know, outside of just the right. family that, that got to celebrate the launch, you yeah. know. The, forgive me, the young lady who hosted last night. Jillian Rabe. She was amazing, man. Yeah, and she helped us put on that event. You know, she, she does production around town, fashion shows. She works with Red Bull, does a bunch of stuff like that. That's and so. yeah, she really helped us pull that off. That that's was, so. yeah, that's fantastic. And she, you know, she believes in the community too. Yeah. We just need all these people that are interested in seeing Portland hip hop, you know, be treated fairly, yeah. frankly, yeah. Uh, coming together, which is happening. Which is, which is really nice because it's probably been. I, 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 it would probably be fair to say it's been a, a probably at least a year that that conversation kind of died down. You know, um, I think of Casey Parks. Forgive me if I'm if I'm um, saying her last name incorrectly. 
who did some amazing um, journalistic work mm. in terms of the connection between the Portland hip hop community and uh, the powers that be. Yeah, fire marshals and OLCC. Yeah, 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 and really how, I mean, things were really looking. I'm in my, you know, my in my words, bleak. You know, for yeah, I mean, for, there were legitimate scandals with the fire marshal and things like that going on. It yeah. wasn't like subversive you know kind of covered up racism or bribery it was you know there's evidence that there was a lot of really unacceptable stuff going on absolutely so to see an event like like last night come off as well as it did getting the support that it did um a year later you know i think that shows it shows progress i hope that's a good precedent right yeah yeah Yeah. um speaking of speaking of the event last night one of the things that i think was pretty cool was the you know, those who, who were in attendance, you know, I was saying to you earlier, man, you could see there was, there was generations of, of, of artists there, you know, I walked in the door and, um, you know, one of the first people I saw was, was, uh, was Trox, Trox Diesel. And then, uh, I saw my man, Kenny Fresh and I turned to my right and I saw Cool Nuts, you know, walking through the crowd. I saw uh, Super 8 was there. I ran into DJ Fat Boy. Um, so just in terms of artists from, from Ilmac. different, yeah, Ilmac. So Ilmac actually, when I was coming in, but you know, artists who are, who are di- different generations and then ran into Matt Nelkin of Liquid Beat Records. And so now you see somebody else from our local industry who was there to support, uh, Dre Slaps. Um, of course we out here was there representing, yeah. um, that was one of the things that was so cool. Uh, just to see, and I, I know I saw the people leaving names. Out. I should never, I should never name drop because I'm gonna leave somebody's name out. But, <laughs> but just that to see that many people all coming together um, to support was 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 really really neat. You yeah, know, really love that. Really crazy for me too, because a lot of those people I wish I had time to you know pay my respects to genuinely. Because when I was younger and I didn't make music, I was listening to Lifesavers and Cool Nuts, and I mean tons of Ilmac. Sam people, that shit was on heavy rotation for me, you know? That was, for me, I was, couldn't find the Portland hip hop except for those few examples, you yeah. know? And so yeah. that was, it was cool to have something to be proud of. Yeah. And yeah. so now I'm just hoping to really give back to, you know, that whole community. We all are because, okay. yeah, I, that music can be good to a much wider audience. I think it can, you know, make a difference in a much wider audience than just locally, so. Did yeah. you you know speaking of speaking of again an artist like Cool Nuts who um, was doing created a label with Just Family Records was that something that you know as you're as you're as you're continuing to build Erst is that something that you sort of think about what what he sort of the foundation that he laid just with Just Family definitely I mean I think we spent a lot of time looking into the other labels around town and just worldwide even just to see cool examples of what's been going on in music you know things that we like that people have done things that we maybe don't want to replicate the whole you know the whole shebang with that and so it's yeah I mean it's really cool to have a city again a lot of these labels aren't known necessarily hugely but to be able to ourselves know hey there's you know a good four or five six even kind of pseudo labels labels in town that when the time is right and the publications come looking the group of all of these you know crews hopefully will have the material that you know the bigger spotlight wants i mean again that's like whether it's true or not that's the reality that i'm gonna continue to harp on and push is that there is enough art here there's enough culture here and it's i mean Hanif himself has said it. The rappers in Portland are better than most of the places he goes, but nobody knows about them. Yeah. So for me, I'm just like, okay, well, we need to get those people out then. Yeah. They're yeah. ready. And if we all, you know, the 30 or 40 people that that ends up representing have their shit together, yeah. then Noisy, whoever those bigger publications are, they can regularly just hit up these groups of people and know there will be content. Yeah. It's just about everybody getting their stuff together and, you know, just rolling out regular content to say Portland is it's legit, you yeah. know. Yeah. We have that art. Yeah. But again, I understand funding is a big problem in the city and that's why it's hard for people to get stuff out. Yeah. So that's why this studio is partially here because no we doubt. really want to work with people and their budgets and get these projects out. Because, yeah. yeah. damn, there, I've heard some crazy unreleased albums out of this city that need to be heard. Yeah, yeah. yeah it blows my mind. That's what's up, man. Chopping up with Neil Von Talley, man. Airst Records. So, um, we'll, we'll come back to that a little bit, but I want to go back even further, man, because one of the things that, 
that really made me um, want to do uh, an episode of Cliff Notes with you was as we were wrapping things up um, for the radio broadcast, you sort of mentioned kind of where you came from pre really focusing on, on music as a career. So I want to get into that a little bit, sort of your background. And yeah. I think it actually started, We were, I was asking you about the um, the Eris logo. For sure, yeah, so, yeah. So first of all, everybody go to, um, uh, the website is... Eris.com. Eris.com. E-Y-R-S-T. There it is. So go to Eris.com or uh, go to any of um, Air social media and look at the look at the logo. And then I just want to start with that, man, because yeah. you told me the story of the logo and I was, I was kind of kind of taken aback man so speak on that right quick uh man yeah the logo uh it's really personally important to me first off because it's yeah i brought it back from cambodia as a sign of compassion and as a reminder that there are still a lot of uh changes you know to be made in the world which is obvious we hear it in the news and the media all the time but that's seeing it firsthand is sort of a different thing um I'll backtrack. A few years ago, I was able to go to Cambodia uh, and sit in on some of the ECCUN trials uh, of some of the the war generals that in the 70s and 80s committed genocide. And that was a really, uh, a very powerful experience. Uh, it's really crazy for, I mean, just in the first place to see like a 97 year old at this point finally being tried over things that happened so long ago and not even really being able to remember what he did. Wow. It poses these really strange ethical questions in my mind. But anyway, that's a whole other subject. We don't need to go down <laughs> that rabbit hole. That's a big one. But um, yeah, man, it, it, it just had a big impact on me. So we, we, uh, you know, we went to the killing fields, and, and we saw where the genocides took place, and uh, we went to the minefields, and, and that's where that symbol was picked up. Uh, there are still over 6 million landmines in the ground in Cambodia, Dude, that's um, a ridiculous number. That's a lot. I mean, there aren't really that many people in Cambodia. You know, that's... Yeah, it's... Really, it's incomprehensible, I guess. I can't really think of a good analogy or anything to represent what that means. Uh, but being in that area was... Uh, terrifying and exciting. I don't necessarily mean exciting in a cool way, just exciting in the adrenaline rush way. But uh, yeah, essentially some of the time when we were, I believe in the North, uh, we were on trails and the trails were lined with not the symbol that is Erst, but something that's sort of like it. And that was to let you know not to deviate from the path because there are landmines in the area. Um, yeah, I just, you know, we we heard stories of kids going to get water from the well and, and having this experience. I can't imagine what it's like to live in a place where you have to watch where you step. I mean, that's, there's nothing normal about that. Um, f- furthermore, the importance of Cambodia to me was to see the music scene there is burgeoning now. Mm. Uh, and, and at the time of the genocide, all of the lawyers, doctors, artists, all of those people in those sort of intellectual, cultural fields were the first to be murdered. Um, by the regime that took over. And so to see the music seem coming back now that there's music in Cambodia, I mean, you know, it, I, my voice wants to crack. I want to cry because that's so cool to me to see that that can come back. Right. You know, that right. people can uh, can revive something that seems like it's been taken from. Yeah. Um, and and sort of that, that whole idea of, you know, the artists being the first to whose lives were taken um, to, to really kill the culture. I mean, that really says something. And and I think one of my favorite definitions, and I'm going to butcher this, of art, it's not verbatim at all, uh, is essentially that art is how society comes to understand itself. I mean, it's the lens with which we understand where we are in the universe, let alone in the world. And so the first thing you want to do when you oppress people to take away their identity is to take away the arts and the culture. Um, and I think that that's, you know, in a, in a very different way, but that has still been happening here. I mean, we have so much gentrification in Portland and to snuff out the quote unquote urban music scene just helps make that gentrification seem more, you know, easy, more yeah. seamless, yeah. like, you know, harder to notice almost. Yeah, yeah. And you, you know, you take the culture away from people. Why do they want to stay? Wow. That's you deep. know, you trick people into leaving essentially because that's you deep. take, take the things that they're there for away. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. So, so that experience in Cambodia really impacted me. Um, but further back than that, uh, I, uh, I, 
I lived in Ghana for a little while. Um, and uh, before I was making music, I worked in an ER. Uh, that, that was what I previously wanted to do. I don't know, another life or whatever. <laughs> but, uh, it, it, you know, working in an ER was, was really beautiful because it was an immediate way to know that I'm making a difference, you know, to be helping people. But it didn't provide me any energy back. It only took from me, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And knowing that it's, you know, almost a personal thing that I feel like I need to know that I'm helping people, that's something I almost struggle with. You know, it's almost like a a character flaw in a sense. Uh, Because, you know, you just beat yourself up if you feel like you're not doing a good enough job for people, whatever, whatever, and you have to enjoy yourself. Right, right. So music for me really came to be where I could find that balance because I really do believe that music is medicine and I really do know for myself that music at times has genuinely saved my life you know you know helped me get through some really dark times I struggle with uh, I have major depressive disorder so I have a chemical imbalance in my brain so that's just some shit I deal with yeah yeah Uh, so music has you know really saved my life so I, I hope that that's something that can continue to be given back and again not just on that heavy note but also you know, help people understand where they are in the universe, where yeah. culture is. Help other artists be seen and heard, and and emit that passion. Yeah. Uh, but heavy, heavy, but yet at the same time, I firmly believe that whenever we're given a platform of any type, and maybe this is deep as well, that with that platform comes a certain level of responsibility, because now you have the attention of someone. I mean, you you expand your immediate circle. And so now as you, as you bring those life experiences and the things that you've seen and, and um, the, the, the joy that you've seen in, in helping people and the horror that you've seen in what humanity does to humanity, and now you've got this platform of heirs, it's got to be, it's got to be about more than just, let's make a record. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, let's make a record is sort of step one. Yeah. I feel like, you know. Yeah. It's definitely bigger than that. And, yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's a lot bigger than that. You know, I mean, we, we want to make a record, but then we want to make the rest of that record, you know, not just the music, but we want to make the physical art. We yeah. want to build the whole aesthetic so that there's this sort of mini universe almost that's being expressed yeah. through that artist. And again, that's, you know, you listen to music sometimes and you feel like you're home. Yeah. That's incredibly valuable. Yeah, yeah. Especially in a society that is constantly shaken up and feels so transient and blah, 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 you know? It, I think putting out an album for an artist is the first step for them to really say what their reality is, mm-hmm. how they really experience the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you share how you feel, you find other people that feel the same way and they feel good about that. And that's where community kind of comes from. Uh, that's what we really, in the end, want is to build a community. You know, to put out albums that sit well alongside the other albums that other people in Portland put out, so that we have this bigger group to represent. You know, this this something bigger going on. Uh, yeah, albums are step one. I mean, also we just want to be involved in the community. Right. We got plans to set up some beat making classes with Ethos and just do some other. You know, again, arts. The funding it's cut in town, so. Yeah. Put some art back into the community. Do That's our best. So. so jumping around. So going yeah. back, <laughs> dude. How'd you even get in the ER? So, because uh, that's not like some. You know, you ain't gonna talk to your average yeah, producer my, I, artist. I don't really know. It's it's hard to talk about my life in a in a way in a sense because it just feels to me very like how did all of this happen? Mm. You know, I don't even. I, yeah, it's just very strange. Anyway, I don't know. Because uh, you're from Seattle. I'm from Seattle, moved to Portland when I was six, you know, dealt with like learning disabilities, all that stuff, whatever, yeah. blah, blah, blah. I had kind of an odd childhood yeah. coming up, overcoming that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then when I was in high school where I met Ripley and Taylor, the CEO of Erst. Shout out uh, to Taylor. Yeah, what up, Taylor? <laughs> Couldn't do it without you, bud. Um, yeah, I was, I was at Catlin, this high school in town, and I was rock climbing and, and just doing other stuff at the time. And Catlin is in like incredibly intensive six hours of homework after you leave school at night it's it was harder than college you know it's harder than nursing school i know that's you know for whatever reason it just was um and so after two years of that i wanted to focus on climbing and i had sort of decided okay well you know 
I can become an EMT as soon as I turn 18, mm -hmm. and then I can go to nursing school or become a doctor mm -hmm. and pretty much be started on my career the second I turn 18. Uh, so I dipped from high school and went to community college, and three months after I turned 18, I got my EMT license. I went and took an intensive course and just lived at the place where we learned. Yeah, um, yeah. so did that, worked in Fresno in an ER for a little while. Saturdays, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Wow, <laughs> Saw some very interesting things during that time. I can uh, only imagine. <laughs> Fresno, California, yeah. 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah, it's on a Saturday. People yeah. people acting pretty wild out there, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, and then I moved back to Portland, uh, sort of started making beats and rapping, just kind of, you know, I needed some other release. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd played piano when I was younger and stuff, but didn't really do music for a while. And then, you know, the plan for me was, okay, I got my ER experience, I got my EMT license, ultimately I want to go do field work in developing countries, so before I get my nursing, paramedic, or doctor, I need to, you know, go get some experience yeah. and see what would be the most useful, yeah. and that's how I ended up in Ghana. Wow. Uh, so I was 19, and I moved to Ghana, I uh, worked in a small medical village um, for an ER, and just kept rapping and making music, and... Uh, <laughs> it's it's crazy, but got on the radio in Ghana actually. Um, I I quit it. But how how random is that, B? It's yeah. I mean, it's all so. That's what I mean. It's like when I tell the story, I sort of feel like an asshole because I'm like, this doesn't. You're you're full of shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it just sounds too silly. Yeah. Like this doesn't all happen. You're yeah. full of it. But. Yeah, I mean, really, my the person that was hosting me one day was like, oh, I heard you freestyling, whatever, in the shower or some shit. The other day, I know this dude that raps in Ghana. I was like, okay. So yeah. we met at a bar, and we just freestyled. And he was like, okay, next week you're coming to the studio with me. I was like, sure, dude, whatever. You know, I didn't think, I didn't know who he was. Yeah. I didn't know anything. Yeah. So we hop in a car the next week and drive six hours to the capital, Accra, in Ghana, and go into this recording studio that's bigger than this you know where we're sitting right now uh, right, and i'm right. like what is this this is crazy they got like egg cartons all over the walls to do soundproofing yeah. it was amazing yeah. the ingenuity you know it was beautiful work with what you got yeah. yeah uh but we recorded a track and the gentleman selassie okay. the rapper okay took six cuts of the cd and was like all right i'm gonna go give these to the radio stations and i like gave him daps and was like sure dude you know whatever right. left went back to working at the orphanage and teaching soccer and shit and just figured that was that. Walking down the street with my homie Jeremiah a few months later, da -da -da, a cabbie goes by and he's like, bro, I swear to God that was that song you guys did. <laughs> I was like, you're full of shit. We keep walking and we get to the local cantina and it's playing. Wow, dude. It's like, How what? surreal, man. Yeah, I was like, what? It actually works that way. Like, Selassie so actually just went to a radio station, gave him a CD and they played it. So, a few more months go by, he comes to the orphanages where I'm working, and he's just like, we're filming a music video. I'm like, okay, let me change out of my scrubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put on the shit that I walk to work in, you right, know. Right. I got dreads at this time. Yeah. I'm like emaciated because I got malaria a few months ago. I weigh like 130 <laughs> pounds. I'm like, great, I'm going to look so good in this music video. Right, right, right. Record it. End up leaving Ghana about, you know, a few months later. My year is pretty much up. And get a message on Facebook like six months later from some dude that's like, dude, I saw you on TV. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're what the fuck are you talking? And he sends me the YouTube link to the video and shit. I was like, how does this happen, man? You know, so ridiculous. Wow. It's different there, obviously. It's yeah. not the same kind of industry, anything right. like that. And it's changed a lot since I left, yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot more interest in in the high life culture, things like that. That's right. the local scene from like European countries and stuff because they've realized it's pretty marketable music right. that they have going on in Ghana. Right, right, right. Uh, but yeah, that was just such a trip. That was my first real foray into all of this and then I came home and started working on a fashion label and went back to nursing school and kind of left music for a second and yeah. then back again. I don't know, man. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Chopping up with Neil Von Sally. You know, it's funny because in a sense then you... You may have you may have had an opportunity to sort of get a glimpse into what it looked like early on here in the states, you know when when um, you know when the industry was really before it was an industry when it was purely just art. And yeah, I mean before there were so many copyright right. rules and so many hoops to jump through, right. you know. Right. So that's got to be again a really cool perspective to bring to what you're doing now. 
you know, to yeah. know that we can't really do it like that anymore, but, but this is what that feels like. I mean, if there's any way you can convey that to the artists that you get to meet, the young people that you get to meet, to help them understand the history of the, of the art form, not the right. industry, but purely yeah. the art form. Yeah, how it became popular, yeah. you know, is through such avenues yeah. it's crazy yeah. yeah and especially in other countries i mean i think it becomes more easy to understand how you can have a huge hip-hop culture in somewhere like denmark or poland mm -hmm. it's like how does that happen yeah. well maybe it's actually more open legally to that culture we have so much trouble with sample clearance and all of these derivative works issues. Those laws need to be reformed. Yeah. There's not a person that doesn't think that that works in the industry. Yeah. I mean, I really believe that. What happened to Robin Thicke and Pharrell? Whatever I think, especially of Robin Thicke. I love Pharrell. Yeah. Robin Thicke, I just won't say anything. That's <laughs> that's my version of whatever. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, that to me, that lawsuit was buffoonery. I mean, that's... That's insane. Yeah. Like you, people have gotten away with much closer, yeah. you know, uh, derivative works, if yeah. you will, yeah. than yeah. that. Uh, to me, they were inspired by that song and that's that. You have people that straight up ripped off songs. Yeah. I mean, I think it was, I can't remember if it was George or Ringo, but yeah. one of the Beatles on their solo tip many years ago wrote a song and got taken to court because it sounded so similar to a song. So the same kind of case yeah. that they just got in with Marvin Gaye. Yeah, yeah. And the way that they won that case was they showed that there was another song that was even closer to Ringo or Paul's song then. It's interesting. How ridiculous yeah, is that? Yeah, I know. It's, 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 it's interesting because I think you, you, you can't discount, you, you, you can't discount, you know, there's so many avenues to it, but at the end of the day, you know, that that old, old saying of everything old is new again, if you're living, you're going to be influenced by other stuff. And maybe it's because That's evolution, I came up, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, you can't help but, um, and then I guess I, I'm definitely, you know, partial because I came up uh, on my old head, you know, so I remember when sampling was, was such a huge part of the culture and I've always looked at that as um, sort of a, an ode to the artists who came before and I understand that everybody you know if you create works then you should be um, recognized for doing that but sampling is art yeah and some artists love to be sampled yeah. and some artists hate it yeah yeah it's very interesting yeah that's that's, that's really that's really really true chopping up with, with Neil Von Talley so um like I said, an interesting journey, and I think it's it's so, um, you know, as a young man, you've had some pretty, uh, some pretty crazy experiences that you can now bring to uh, your peers and then people younger than you. Now, as you talk about working on building community, um, that 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 idea of community has to feel different. Then, I, I, and I don't mean to belittle what what so many others are working on or are doing, but when you you know it's got to feel so different than maybe what some folk have done before in terms of that definition of community and how to really reach people um, in a very very real way through whatever means you have. And so, like you mentioned, you know you're doing it at as of last night. You're starting off with the music piece, but then there is so much more. That heiress plans to do. Can you speak on that a little bit about more specifically some of the things that people can look forward to, to what you guys have to offer? Yeah, I mean, I we definitely have music projects slated. We definitely have music videos slated, yeah. uh, but we also have things like short films, and uh, I mean, we also have our physical products. You know, we have a fashion line uh, that we're working on with a designer, Toru Okayama. Um, that that's where my outfit last night came from. Oh, that's what's up. Uh, yeah, he he handmade all of that. Um, that's crazy. So he's a G. Shout out to Toru. But you know, for us again, it's 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 I think about looking at what we're doing through the the bigger lens of culture instead of just hip hop or just one art form. You know, one medium and more. You know, what can we do to help the community and what can we do to just connect with the community mm -hmm. because helping the community i mean martel's a very generous guy he's mm -hmm. a very passionate guy but he doesn't you know 
I don't know anybody that has enough money to help all of the starving artists, right, you know, in right. town. That's not a, a reality. But I think that there really is a way to find that balance, to get the spotlight on Portland, you know, to get other publications rather to sort of pull the spotlight over to Portland and it benefits the whole community. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I... I think you should just really look forward to a lot of all ages events, nice. a lot of fundraising. Nice. We, yeah, I mean, we just want to be involved in the community. Uh, Martel just recently went and spoke at a couple of local high schools nice. out on the deeper east side. Just yeah. about, you know, for for him, uh, a big platform of this is to remind people, uh, especially young kids, that basketball is a great option mm-hmm. to have, mm-hmm. but it's not your only choice because yeah. Martel really feels like he. There were times that he lost out mm-hmm. on other things in life because people had pushed him so hard to basketball. Yeah. You know, so so again, that's like for Martel specifically, that's a piece of what he wants to use Airst for, yeah. to remind people that you have options. Yeah. It's not to tell people not to do basketball, right. but to show another way. Right, right. And I know I'm being quite tangential, yeah. but yeah. that pulls into something bigger, which is just... I think we have a lot of examples of stereotypes in society. I think we have a lot of examples of what we all think and agree is cool and yeah. what we all think and agree is not cool. Yeah. And not a lot of examples of something new that can fit that still. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. not a lot of people that are the wrong kind of weird, quote, mm-hmm. you know, not mm-hmm. Portland weird, still being able to make it, whatever. Yeah. So I think really broadening that perspective is, is important. It's it you know as we talk it also makes me it makes me think about you know I think it's really easy sometimes to to it almost becomes clicheish yeah you know we want to build with the community we want to we want to yeah everybody wants a community you know right, what I mean yeah right so how do you avoid getting caught up in that well I mean I think the first thing that anybody has to know as a person is not everybody's ever going to get where you're coming from mm-hmm. or what you're trying to do. So people that don't get that we genuinely want to help the community and not ourselves, you know, hopefully we can turn them around when they see what we're doing with other artists and and in the community. Um, But yeah, man, I mean, I think that cliches are sometimes there for a reason. You know, I think we avoid cliches because they seem so obvious, but cliches are cliches because they're often true. So the fact that we all like to talk about community and are, you know, supposedly starving for a community, I think in on some root level means that we all really do want that to exist. You know, I think we all want to believe that we could on a monthly, on a, you know, somewhat regular basis all come out to a hip hop show, have no violence, not have the fucking cops or the fire marshal show up and all enjoy ourselves, you know, be able to bring people that might not be a part of that culture or that scene in and know that they'll feel comfortable, you know, share that with a bigger a bigger group of people. So, yeah, I mean, I guess if you want to know who the community to me is, it's everybody out here trying to be creative and trying to push that positivity for art. You know, not looking out for themselves, but that really believe art can make a difference. Yeah. I mean, we have some really powerful, popular people in the global scene making a difference. I mean, Kendrick Lamar, you yeah. know, I have to say I respect what he is doing with his voice. Mm-hmm. And I really believe that there are people in this town that, given that opportunity, would contribute to that. Yeah. You know, yeah. what, what, uh, what changes are really being made and brought into people's minds to try and open them up yeah. to where the world is going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But because, you know, I think one of the, I, I think of when you speak of needing, in, in, you know, in my words, to sort of recharge the batteries when you were um, doing your work in the healthcare field, I think you can also, there's there's also the potential to, to run into that same thing with what you're doing right now because I mean you got to know that there's going to be so many people who are like okay yeah I hear what you're saying but I right, but what's the you know when is the other shoot like what are you really after like what, and or you know, what, what does that you, really mean because right. we've all heard it before right, so, right, right yeah like you can't just be that generous like you can't just be that transparent that like really all right so you're doing this so you can get to so how do you so 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 what what do you do to recharge the batteries? Is it just that being in the community and building and seeing that blossoming? Mean, is that is that what keeps you keeps you moving forward? Yeah, I mean, I think because we launched yesterday, you know, now we are really going to be more vocal. Initially, community has been something we've talked about and is important, but now we'll actually be able to to make that happen, you know, and show it. But you know, I think to show people you're genuine, you just have to act, you know. And I know that 
part of that comes from going to schools like Martel did. Part of that comes from doing charity events, raffling to Ethos like we did last night, giving them a, you know, a portion of our proceeds. Um, but also part of that comes from word of mouth. And I really trust and believe the people around us that they are going to say, hey, this shit that's going on over here is crazy. Like, you know, I'm, I, to be totally honest, I'm not the type of person that will hop on Twitter and be like, man, I haven't slept in days because I'm grinding, blah, blah, blah. And I don't, I'm not saying that in disrespect to people that like to talk like that, but I'm, I'm just shy. I'm an introvert. And I fear that people will just think I'm an asshole for talking like that. So I don't really show out like that. So for me, I, I guess I hope and expect, you know, the people around me to be like, yeah, that dude sleeps on the couch in the studio most of the time because he's trying to make all this work for us, you yeah. know? I'm hoping that the people around will just recognize, you know, real, recognize, real, yeah. whatever. That's another cliche for you, but yeah. it tends to be true. Right. I had people last night that I had never met before that I've known about for a long time that I got to shake their hand and tell them I appreciate them, and they said the same back to me. I think that's how you, you know, make it happen. Yeah. One step at a time. Yeah. But yeah. we're fucking serious. And people will figure it out or they won't. But right. I think selling out on the first show that we've ever done, yeah. giving away to charity, doing all that, I really hope people get the picture. Yeah. Because yeah. anybody that wants our help, anybody that wants to fuck with us, we're trying to fuck with you. No doubt. We're trying to make this happen. So yeah. call me out on it. See if it's true. Test me. Go for it. Yeah. You know? We're ready. <laughs> one of the sort of one of one of my mantras is truly louder than words because I think that that is that's really where that's re really what it all comes down to. Yeah, you have to act. And I think I think the other thing that I've also learned through my through my number of years on this planet is that um, we all can do something. Fact, and yeah. you know, I think we live in a um, I think the wonder of social media we're all able to sort of put out there the, the things that we're involved in and inviting people to be a part of it. Um, just remember that you can utilize even that to support. And so just kind of tailing on what you're saying, you know, if you, if you had an opportunity to attend the event last night, one of the great things that you can do is talk about what a good event it was. You know, if you can't make it out to the event, there's other ways that you can support. Um, I've learned through through having the blessing of um, you know of now being a part of the broadcast industry and and, and building with artists here locally that um, everybody doesn't necessarily have to do the same thing because there's I think that that's fact, a, people need to do different things they need and and I think that's what is that's what makes a a, a sustainable community if everybody realizes well my, maybe my strength is just to go out and shake people's hands and, and tell people about what's happening here. If that's your strength, then definitely take advantage of that. And again, I think that's why we all crave community. Yeah. Because we all know that we can't, realistically, no one person can sustain themselves for their whole life. But if you have people fulfilling those different roles, yeah. you're great. Yeah, yeah. So with that being said, um, what, are, what are some of the ways that Erst is today... So label launch was last night. People who hear this, who hear this, this conversation, like what's a real way that somebody who hears this that says, "Man, I want to be a part of that." What's a real way that they can do that? Really, starting today. Man, I mean, as simple as it is, obviously getting on social media, following our stuff. You know, at Erst Music on Twitter, at Erst on Instagram, backslash Erst on Facebook. Uh, I'm pretty sure just straight up Erst on SoundCloud. <laughs> you know, just. Just participate with us. You know, we we will interact with the people that want to interact with us. Yeah. We really want to, yeah. I mean, we just want to hear from people what they want. Yeah. You know, because I, at the end of the day, I'm really coming from only what I've seen yeah. in Portland. Only my experiences in Portland. I know I'm I'm one person. People have different experiences here. People have a different perspective on the hip hop culture here and what's gone on here than I have. Yeah. We, I mean. Just talk to us, you know, let us know what you think the community needs. Just participate. Because, yeah, I mean, like I said before, we'll, we'll respond. Like, we're, we're here to, to kick it with everybody. We're here to, like, to participate. We won't be billing only Airst Artist shows in the future, you know what I mean? That was for our launch party. In the future, it's going to be an Airst Artist and whoever else we can support, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the basic call to action right now is to just get at us on social media, you know, converse with us, tell us what you want, and 
stay tuned because we got a bunch of really crazy releases coming up. We got two full months of stuff to drop on you guys. We got new Mike Bogan. We got new Martell videos. We got some singles from some non airst artists in town That's that we're going to be dropping. Okay. So, yeah, it's it's crazy because so I got to give a shout out to my man Joe. Joe, forgive me um, for not putting your last name out there, but um, <laughs> Joe has been doing some work with with X Ray, which is how he and I connected, and he reached out to me and said because um, I had seen. I'd seen um, uh, the advertisement or the the announcement for the for the label launch and hadn't really made the connect. Mm -hmm. But Joe was like, "Yo, this is happening, and um, it would be it'd, it'd be cool to be a part of this." And um, and then he he made the he made the connect with me, and then we built, and just like that, like realistically, within like three or four days, had the opportunity to to, to meet you and build with you. And then within a week's time now have the opportunity to so I say that to say like this is this is this is real tangible accessible uh, accessible um opportunities for people to be a part of this. Yeah, there's no fun. snobbery, there's no snuffing that yeah, I mean, we don't think we're better than anybody, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Which is dope. Which is dope to see to see the level that you guys are working at. You know, being someone from the outside looking in, I think it's really easy to look at Artists who've had a certain level of success musically, um, someone who has had a level of success in his professional um, career, who's behind this as a professional basketball player, and think, "Wow, that's." But no, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's very, it's very, it's very warm and, and welcoming, and, and and like you said, accessible. And so, again, just want to encourage people to you know to reach out. Um, via any of the ways that that Neil put out there to be a part of this. I also wanted to speak on. The, the the label as it stands right now one of the cool things is that you have a pretty ec eclectic um mix of artists right now which is kind of dope um so there's there's kind of a little something for everybody yeah yeah definitely i mean i think uh i mean eclectic is the perfect word yeah. i think that we i mean i personally feel really lucky to have met a lot of the people that i've been able to to work with very blessed uh for that and so ripley and blossom and mike you know being among those people and then martel too mm -hmm. you know and all coming from different places uh but having that common thread still yeah. all people that really want to change the community and really just are here to make music that makes people feel good yeah. so it's great to be able to make different types of music yeah for those different types of feel good that people want, yeah. you know, yeah. I hope that the people that didn't necessarily enjoy the straight bars last night yeah. enjoyed Blossom singing or Ripley right. when he was singing, or right. you know, right. like you said, something for everybody. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. that's what's up. Neil Von Talley, Erst Records. Actually, I mean, you can't even say Erst Records. It's like Erst, Erst Art. Yeah, I don't know. Erst, is, <laughs> it's a label, it's Erst, yeah. studio, clothes, yeah. Yeah. whatever. I don't know, man. That's yeah, we'll up, see man. what it becomes, I yeah. guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up, man. B, thank you so much, man. Like I said, I know that the you know the label launch was was just last night, and so I know you're you're still you know feeling the the energy from that. I so appreciate you taking man. some time to come on Cliff Notes, man. It's appreciate a, it's you wanting to talk, absolutely, and for having us on before, man. Welcome to the neighborhood. That's great. We'll be back for sure. Want neighborhood to drag the rest of baby. our artists through there for sure. Let's do it, man. Yeah, I gotta Let's get Ripley. You gotta get everybody on the spot. No doubt. I talked to Mike last night and. Like I said, I got to meet Blossom last night. And yeah, I'm so glad you did. Yeah, yeah, that was that was really really cool because she's done some wonderful things and and uh, yeah, man, just looking forward to continue to build. So yeah, man, so That's much fun. fun. I really, yeah, I mean, whether I'm tooting my own horn, whether it's something I want to believe and it's not true, whatever it is, I I really hope and believe that last night was you know a good step forward for the hip hop community in Portland. I believe so. You know, I believe that, so. That was our intention, and yeah, I hope that that reverberated for everybody and i hope that vibed so no doubt man all right y'all so that's it man it's erst e-y-r-s-t uh connect on social media uh reach out and just stay tuned for for more great music more great visuals more great community um dj cliff all over social media at dj cliff uh, dj k-l-y-p-h or www.djcliff.com yeah um yeah man we're just gonna keep it moving dj cliff <laughs> <laughs> killing it killing it supporting the local scene see that's no what i doubt. mean though community we all need each other that's what we do man all right y'all until next time be blessed peace